So in front of us is the Lumix S uh, 100mm f2.8 macro lens. And it's more than just a macro lens. It's useful for photography, useful for videos. If you want to get those close-up shots, you can get those shots as well. And it's also fantastic for portrait shots and even some telephoto kind of situation. Uh, if you just want to have that compact lens that you can take around with you. One thing I love about Lumix is the fact that they care so much about their creators. For example, they've just launched a bunch of updates for the S series, so the S5 Mark II and the S5 uh, Mark II X. And with those uh, comes things like um, support for Adobe uh, Frame IO. You've got things like proxy support, so you can rec record high quality proxy to SSD and a full quality uh, video to uh, your SD card, for example. We can mix it and all that kind of stuff. So anyway, I digress. They look after the creators to make sure that when you get this product, they are useful, they are functional, and they serve the purpose that they are created to serve. Having said that though, the reason why I brought that up is because this lens is actually the same thread size, for example, as plenty of other lenses that they've got on the market. So if you are somebody who has an L-mount uh, device, this would be a really good uh, addition to your collection uh, of lenses. And I really love this lens. I used to use my 85mm lens quite a lot. I still use it a lot, uh, but this has kind of taken over uh, for a while now, just testing it and using it for different scenarios, whether it's uh, doing those telephoto lens for, for, for some like architectural photos and some portraits and just some fun stuff with macro. Uh, but anyway, let's start with the design and talk about the design, see what it's all about. And uh, perhaps I should take it off the camera so we get a closer look at it. So in terms of the design and stuff, as you can see here, uh, we have this nice focal uh, ring here, which, uh, sorry, focusing ring, which is nice and smooth. You can just rotate it. It has this nice groove on it as well for just that extra tactile feeling and also the rubbery feel on there as well. It feels nice and soft for easy and precise and accurate focusing if you need to do so. On the side, we have the AF-MF uh, switch. So you can switch between autofocus and manual focus very easily. And it has a nice clicky feedback to it as well so that when you click it, you know that it's clicked into place. And then up top, uh, above that, we have our focus limiter. So with this one, we have three ranges. So we have 22, 50 centimeters, 50 centimeters to infinity or you can go full range if you wish to do so. The reason why you might switch between this is because the 20 to 50 uh, will be useful for when you're shooting your macro shots, and then uh, 50 to infinity will be good for portrait shots, and then you've got the uh, full range. Uh, but you can switch between this and see what suits your preference, and depending on what you're shooting, you might want to play around with it until you get the shots that you want. Obviously, when shooting macro, this would also matter with focus hunting, uh, because when you have it on full, it means it must focus on parts of the subjects that you don't want it to focus on. So again, just play around with it and see which one works best for you. The lens is actually quite durable as well, besides being compact and very lightweight. In fact, before I talk about the durability, I've also got the Sony counterpart uh, competitor here. This is an f2.8 macro lens uh, from Sony. And this one is much more heavier, much bigger, as you can see there. It's taller than the Lumix one. So you can see what they've done there. And we'll talk more about that in a second to see how they've managed uh, to achieve that. So back to the durability though, this is dust, splash, and freeze resistant. So you're looking at up to minus 10 degrees Celsius. So if you want to go to the Arctic Circle and do some crazy shots out there, this would be a really good counterpart or companion to have uh, in your uh, pl plethora of tools that you're going to take with you on those kind of adventures. So I uh, do take this with you. On the front, like I said already, this is a six or seven millimeters uh, thread. So this is the same as a majority of the prime lenses, the Alma lenses that uh, uh, Lumix do or Panasonic. Uh, but yeah, so you'll be able to use those thread straight on this or ND, ND filters and all that kind of stuff. So that way you don't have to go out and invest in extra accessories just to be able to use this. One thing I also love as well is if you see that Lumix logo or sign on there as well and the writing, it kind of like darker as well, darker text. So that way it reduces reflection when you're taking those close up uh, macro shots. So they thought about it again to make sure that everything just looks and works the way that it should do. In the box as well, which I don't have here, you also get a bayonet mounted uh, lens hood, which you can reverse as well for travel or whatever, but I don't really use it. So, but it's in the box if you need it. One thing you notice that this doesn't have uh, stabilization built in. And the reason for that is because if you're going to be using this anyway with your Lumix S5 Mark II or the Mark II X, it's got all the kind of stabilizations that you need to make this work comfortably well. And I've got, it's, I'm a testament to that because I was able to shoot videos with this without having to worry about stabilization in this lens. With that also means that being able to keep this nice and compact and also nice and lightweight as well. So having all that extra motor in there just makes it heavier. In fact, you're looking at 300 grams in terms of the weight. It's so compact and lightweight. I can't stress that enough. Panasonic also designed a new dual face linear motor uh, that's in there. This is what it's used for this focusing to make sure that it focuses nice and quickly with no breathing at all. So 
it doesn't have that hunting and breathing when you focus in and stuff it's nice and sharp and looks good you have nine aperture blades in there as well and this gives you one-to-one -one ratio of magnification in terms of the closest focus and distance lumix states 20.4 centimeters i've been playing around with this and i've been getting like 11 centimeters kind of close to the subject to be able to get some focus and some macro shots and it still works really well so again like i said one thing that's great about this is it's so much fun to play around with so when using this you just have to play around with things like your aperture your your lighting and all that kind of stuff to be able to to get those shots in a different way and play around with it and see what you get out of it of course this will be a review without showing you some sample shots as well so i shot so many things with this including like i said some architecture uh, stuff out in valencia i shot some stuff uh, in the studio as well some close-up shots of like a ring and the guitar strings and all that kind of stuff just to show you guys what this is capable of so have a look see what you think uh whilst we're looking at them some of the things that i picked out is is uh, my focusing so depending on what aperture i use if i open it wide i get different results if i close it up i get different results it depends how much i want in my shot really so if i go to like f7 i uh, uh, stop i get more in focus for example and if i go all the way to a lower depth of field if i go to the the, the minimal or the widest that it goes f2.8 you will get less in there as well you can focus on certain parts of your of your subject for example so Again, like I said, it depends on what you want. You just have to play around with it to get the exact result that you want. So it's so much fun to use in that sense. Shooting a portrait shot with it as well. You can get a really nice portrait shot with a nice blurry background. And this one on the screen probably don't do it that much justice, but you can still see how sharp the details are and so on. When it comes to the soft edges and stuff like that, it just depends on what aperture settings that you're using. So when you're using a lower number of aperture, you see that you're getting softer edges and stuff like that. But when you open it uh, or you, you use a, a bigger, larger aperture amount, you get more in shots. So you get sharper images. And even the, the one that's softer on the edges, you still get still quite sharp on the focused area. So the areas that you focus on still comes out really sharp and detailed, which I really love. I also love that there's minimal distortion as well, which is great. And also minimal fringing. And also the autofocus is very silent. So when you're in a situation where you're shooting like a sports uh, event like tennis, you can put, you can just rely on this and make sure uh, you can rely on this and be rest assured that this is not going to be making so much noise. Put the uh, shot of sound down as well on the actual body of the camera. And Bob's your uncle, you get a silent unit there in front of you. If I have any negative to say about it, it's the fact that it doesn't have uh, in-body stabilization. But honestly, it does not matter because the camera itself, the Lumix S5 Mark II and the Mark II X that I use this with, they just comfortably handled everything to do with the focus inside enough to worry about that at all sometimes when it comes to focus hunting you do get that there as well but the way around this that i found was just slow just go manual manual focusing change the uh, uh the limiter as well to a better distance to be to be able to get exactly where you want it to be and be more precise so that's just a way around that so apart from that i don't have many bad things to say about it at all it's a fantastic lens and the pricing is up there with the competitors as well so I won't complain too much about that but overall really good uh, lens and i'll definitely recommend it if you're rocking the s5 mark ii or the mark ii x or if you have uh, an l mount compatible uh, unit then then definitely definitely add this one uh, to your toolkit as well but over to you let me know what you think if you have any questions uh drop them below as well sorry it's taking me so long to do this review uh this this lens actually came out back in january and here i am just uh only just doing the review but yeah let me know what you think in the comments below and thanks for watching make sure you subscribe and i'll see you guys in the next one